With this video, I am starting a basic FreeCAD tutorial and I will try to cover the basic issues and fundamental issues of working in this system. On my channel, you will find many videos about FreeCAD and in each video I cover different issues. However, I regularly get questions about the basics. Let's start with the fact that FreeCAD is a 3D CAD system and learning to use systems of this class takes some time and requires some patience. It is a specialized software and if you are not related to the technical industry, and you want to learn this software, then you need to take some time to learn. Because there are a lot of concepts here, a lot of issues that are understandable and simple for people who have had experience either with this industry or have technical experience. And for those who are not in the technical field, some of the concepts may not be fully understood. However, in this tutorial, I will try to cover these basics so that people who have no experience with working in 3D CAD systems or are not in the technical field will also find their way around. And during this tutorial, we will create a simple part so that we discuss most basic issues related to 3D modeling in 3D CAD systems. One way to create 3D models in 3D CAD systems is to create 3D models from 2D sketches. And this is exactly how we will prepare a 3D model in FreeCAD. When it comes to FreeCAD and modeling in FreeCAD, FreeCAD is modular and has many different modules for different applications. The module where we can prepare a 3D solid based on 2D sketches is the part design module. Select this module and then click this button or that button to create a new design. And now we will start by creating a sketch. First, switch to the model tab and here in this place will be the operations and sketches that we will add during the creation of the project. And this is the tree of operations. The project that will be created based on the 2D sketch. We can start in two ways. The first way is to select create sketch and create a sketch. I will now choose this option and select the sketch plane and I will exit the sketch and pay attention to what happened here. A sketch has been added but also a new body has been added and a body is an element, a component, a single part that we create. And we can also do it this way. Now I'm going to remove that. That first we create a new body and now in this body we can create a sketch. and the sketch has been added. I will remove that body. And let's start the project from scratch. Click Create Sketch. And here we have to specify the plane on which we will create this sketch and we have a choice of one of the three basic planes of the coordinate system. In CAD systems we work on the XYZ coordinate system and we have three planes to choose from XY, YZ and XZ. Let's choose the XY plane. To do this, left click on this plane, or here select the plane on which we will create the sketch and click OK. In both cases it will work the same way and the XY plane will be selected as the sketch plane. Click OK and now we are in the sketcher and we can create the geometry. Now, just as a quick aside, I will go over the basics of navigation. By rotating the mouse wheel we can zoom in and out of the view. And here, to make it easier, we can turn on the sketch grid. Click on this icon and we have the sketch grid enabled with a 10mm spacing. And what else is worth enabling is auto constraints and auto remove of redundant constraints. And I will come back to the constraints regularly when creating the sketch. But make sure you have these options checked. And first I'll create the geometry of the rectangle. Select Create Rectangle. And drawing the rectangle involves pointing to the two corners of the rectangle that lie on the same diagonal and we simply do that by left clicking in the work area. We specify the first point and specify the second point. However, I'll take it back at this point and create the rectangle in such a way that the first corners of the rectangle are related to the origin of the coordinate system and we can do this automatically or manually. To do it automatically, that is using auto constraints. As you go to the point of the origin of the coordinate system, this point will be highlighted in yellow. And now, if you click the left mouse button, then the first corners of the rectangle will be connected to this point. And now you can specify the position of the second point. And the rectangle has been drawn. I'm going to click Ctrl Z to undo that 
and now they're going to create a rectangle in such a way that the first corner of the rectangle will not be associated with the origin of the coordinate system. Click this point and click this point and we have a rectangle created whose corners are not connected to the origin of the coordinate system. And now I will show you how to constrain it manually. But at this point, the command to draw a rectangle is still active. We can create more rectangles. However, I would like to end this. And in order to end the active command, you have to right click or the escape key. And now I don't need this geometry, so select this geometry and press delete on the keyboard to delete this geometry. And now using the constraint, I'm going to add a relationship between these two points, specifying that these two points are coincident. And to do that, we can first select the two points and then select the coincident constraint. And at that point, the two points are connected to each other. And OK, we have a rectangle created and we also have the specified relation of that point. But now as I grab with the left mouse button, this corner of the rectangle or this side of the rectangle, I can freely change the dimensions of this rectangle. Draw the rectangle again at any point. Click escape to cancel this command. And as for this rectangle, this rectangle already has the position of this vertex specified and by grabbing this vertex or any of the sides of the rectangle, I can only change the dimensions of this rectangle. But I can no longer change the position of this rectangle because the position of this corner is constrained with the origin of the coordinate system and we can't change that. But when it comes to this rectangle, if I grab the side of this rectangle, I can freely change both the dimensions of the rectangle and the position of this rectangle. This rectangle doesn't have any relationship defined with the origin of the coordinate system or any other geometry. So we can freely change the dimensions and position of this rectangle. Again, select and delete this rectangle. And now let's add the dimensions of this rectangle. And to add a horizontal dimension, select the constraint horizontal distance command. But before select that, let's drag these options into here some more so that we don't have to expand these commands so that we can just see everything clearly. And now to add a horizontal dimension, select this command, select this line and here enter 100 millimeters and this command is still active, but we don't have any more dimensions to specify here. So right click. And now this dimension of the rectangle already has a specified length and by grabbing this side of the rectangle, we can't change this dimension. At this point, in this axis, the dimension of the rectangle is already specified. The case is different with this dimension. Here we can freely change this dimension and now we're going to add a vertical dimension and we can also add dimensions in such a way that first we select what we want to dimension and then we select the dimension and here enter 60 millimeters and click enter. And what you need to pay attention to is that the sketch has turned green and here we have the information that the sketch is fully constrained and this is what we try to aim for when creating 2D sketches in 3D CAD systems. Because a fully constrained sketch means that we cannot freely change its dimensions or its position. Any change in the shape or position of the geometry must be done consciously by editing the dimensions or by editing the constraints. And now, to change this dimension, we have to double click with the left mouse button on that dimension and we can enter a new value. And that dimension has been changed. We can't do that freely by dragging the geometry, nor we can freely change the position of that geometry. And when creating 3D models, Based on a 2D sketch, let's try to make sure that those sketches are fully constrained because for more complex parts, a not fully constrained sketch can spoil the design. That's why it's a good idea to pay attention to this from the very beginning because when we have a fully defined and fully related sketch, it's harder to accidentally mess up the design. And okay, here we have a simple sketch of a rectangle. Let's draw two more circles. Choose the command to draw a circle. And now, to draw a circle, you need to specify the center of this circle. Click more or less at this point and then specify the point that will lie on the circumference of the circle. Click more or less at this point so as to create a circle. And now let's create a second circle at this point and right click to cancel the circle drawing command. And at this point we have two circles whose position or diameter is not yet defined. 
To add a diameter dimension, choose the Constrain Diameter command. Select the circle and enter the diameter of this circle. Enter 10 millimeters, and we could specify the diameter of the other circle in the same way. However, I would like these circles to have the same diameter. Therefore, right click to cancel the dimensioning command. And now, let's use the equal constraint, which will determine that the diameters of these circles are equal. And in order to do that, select these two circles. And when it comes to selecting geometry in the sketcher, all we have to do is click on that geometry with the left mouse button. We don't have to do it with the Ctrl K. And we have two geometries selected. Now select constraint equal, and this makes the two geometries equal. And now if we change the diameter of this circular to 12 millimeters, the diameter of this circle will also be changed. Then I would like these circles to lie in such a way that they are evenly spaced relative to the center of this rectangle. And for this purpose, let's create an auxiliary line. Select Draw a Line. And now let's draw the line in such a way that the beginning of the line will be constrained with this line and the end of the line will be constrained with this line. And in order to automatically constrain the point of the new line with the existing geometry, then as you go with the left mouse button on the geometry, and the geometry will be highlighted in yellow. And now as you left click it, the starting point of the new line has been connected to that line. And we can do it the same way with the other line. However, click somewhere so that we can constrain this point to this line manually. Right click to cancel the line drawing. And now to constrain this point to this line so that this point lies on this line. Select this point and this line and select constrain a point onto object. And at this point we have constraints to points of the line to the two sides of the rectangle. But the position of this line is not yet determined and I would like this line to lie in the center of the rectangle. And we can do this in two ways. The first way is we can use dimensions and we can specify the dimension between these two points. Select these two points. Select the vertical dimension and here enter 35 millimeters. And now this line lies in the middle of the rectangle. However, when we change this dimension to, for example, 80 millimeters, the position of this line has not changed and this line no longer lies in the center of this rectangle, but is still offset by 35 millimeters from the edge. Therefore, in such cases, it is better to use constraints. And we will add a symmetry constraint here, which will make this line lie between the two lines. At first, let's remove this dimension. Select this dimension and press delete. And now to add a symmetry constraint so that this line lies in the middle of the rectangle, select this point, this point, and then this point. And now select the symmetry constraint and thanks to the fact that we use the symmetry constraint, this line lies in the middle of the rectangle. And now when we change this dimension to 70 millimeters, the position of this line has also been changed. And at this point, this line is a normal sketch line and I would like it to be a construction geometry that is such an auxiliary geometry. And to do that, select this line and select this option to switch this geometry to construction geometry. And this geometry turned its color to blue and that means that it's a construction line that is an auxiliary line. And now I want these circles to lie at an equal distance from this line. That is, the distance of the center of this circle from this line is the same as the distance of the center of this circle from this line. And we can do this too with the symmetry constraint. Select the center of this circle, then the center of this circle. Now select this line and choose the symmetry constraint. And this makes these two circles lie symmetrically with respect to this line. Now let's select the center of this circle and the center of this circle. Select Constrain Vertical Distance and enter here 40 millimeters as the distance between the centers of these circles. And at this point, when moving the circles, we can only move these circles along the X axis because along the Y axis, the distance between these circles is already specified. Let's add the distance of these circles from this edge. Select this point and this point and select Constrain Horizontal Distance and enter 20 millimeters here. And we already have a fully constrained sketch. To finish the sketch, click Close. And based on such a sketch, we can create a solid. And I will show you how to do that in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, we created a sketch and covered a lot of basics. In this lesson, I will show you how to create a 3D solid from a 2D sketch.
One of the basic operations for creating 3D solids in 3D CAD systems is to extrude a 2D sketch to a certain distance. And to do this, select the pad operation. And here specify the extrude length. Enter, for example, 15 mm. As you click next to this field, the view will be updated. Of course, the update view option must be checked. Click OK. And in this way, a solid has been created on the basis of the 2D sketch for a height of 15 mm. And we have the first 3D solid. And now let me tell you a few words about navigation in FreeCAD. And at the beginning let's choose the right navigation style, and here choose the blender style. And now, as you hover over to this place, a pop-up will appear with a hint on how navigation works in FreeCAD using this navigation style. And by turning the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. And if you zoom in or out too much, you can use this fit all command to display all the geometry in the workspace. If you press the mouse wheel, then you can rotate the view. And if you press shift and the mouse wheel and move the mouse, then you can move the view. And these are the basic issues of navigation in FreeCAD. And when it comes to views, you can also use standard views. You can use these icons, or you can choose standard views from the view menu. And here we also have these views. And we can also use this navigation cube to set the views. And we can also click on the cube to select the appropriate view. And so in this operation, based on the 2D sketch, we added the material. But the other basic operation that works on 2D sketches is the remove material operation. And we will create another sketch. When it comes to creating sketches, we can create sketches on both base planes and model faces. Select this face to create a sketch on this face. That is, just left click on this face and select create sketch. And now we can create a sketch on this face and select Create Rectangle here, and draw a rectangle like this, and right click to cancel the Draw Rectangle command. And at this point, this rectangle does not have a specific position or dimensions. We will define the position of the rectangle, so that it is symmetrically about the line passing through the center of this solid. And now let's draw an auxiliary line, like in the previous case. In this case, we will need a reference geometry. To create reference geometry for this solid, click Create External Geometry, and point to this line. Right click to cancel this command. And now this line is an auxiliary line and is a reference line to the solid, to the solid that we created in the previous step. Select create line and place the first point of the line on the Y axis. Hover the cursor over the Y axis and as the Y axis is highlighted, then left click and place the second point on this line. Right click to cancel this command, select this point, this point and this point and select constrain symmetrical. Then select this point, this point and this line and select symmetry constraint. And now the rectangle is symmetrically placed relative to this line. Then select this line and switch this line to the construction line. And now let's add the dimensions of the rectangle. Select the vertical dimension, select this line Enter 40 millimeters here. Then select the horizontal dimension. Select this line. Type 50 millimeters here. And the horizontal dimension command is still active. And select this point and this point and enter 10 millimeters here. The sketch is completed. It is fully defined. Click close to exit the sketch. And now, based on this sketch, add an operation to remove material from this solid. And this is the pocket operation. Select this operation, and here specify the depth to which the pocket is to be made. Enter here, for example, 7 mm, then click OK. And with this, based on the 2D sketch, we can remove material from the solid. And these operations, the operation for creating solids based on 2D sketch, and the operation for removing material based on 2D sketch, are the basic operations for creating 3D solids based on 2D sketches in 3D CAD systems. FreeCAD, like many 3D CAD systems, is a parametric system, and this means that when creating sketches and models, we work on parameters that we can edit. The dimensions of the sketch, as well as the extrude height and pocket depth, these are parameters that we can change. 
And now, in order to change the first sketch from which this solid was created, we have to edit that sketch. However, if you look at the operations tree here, this sketch is not visible. And this is because this sketch was used for the extrude operation. This is a pad operation, and this sketch is inside this operation. And this is this sketch. And now if you double click with the left mouse button or the right mouse button and choose edit sketch, you are switched to edit the sketch. And now you can, for example, change the dimensions of this sketch. Double left click on this dimension. Type 120 millimeters here. Then double left click on this dimension. And type 90 millimeters here. And click close to exit. The changes we added in the sketch were also applied to the solid. Similarly, we can change the second sketch that was used for the pocket operation. Double left click on this sketch. Then double left click on this dimension and enter 70 millimeters here. Click close to exit the sketch and the changes made in the sketch have been applied to the solid. If you will be creating more complex shapes, more operations will appear in the operations tree. And in some cases, it's a good idea to rename the operations to ones that will be easy to identify later in the creation of the 3D solid. To rename an operation, right, click on the operation and select Rename and enter the new name. Click Enter to confirm and the name has been changed. And if you would like to edit the extrude length or pocket depth, the operation should be edited. To do this, double click with the left mouse button and here you can enter a new extrude value. Click OK and this has been applied to the solid. But as far as the parameters are concerned, we can also change these parameters in this table. And here for the pocket operation, as well as for the extrude operation, we have parameters that we can change. But if you pay attention, we have here length and length 2. The length parameter is the one we defined here. And the parameter length 2 appears when we choose two dimensions as the operation type. Then we can specify an extrusion in the other direction, but we will leave it for now. Here we have a length parameter. Cancel this operation and this parameter. I'll change here and here. I'll enter, for example, 10 millimeters. Click somewhere next to it. And this parameter has been changed and the pocket depth has been adjusted to this parameter. I'll type in, for example, 2 millimeters to make it more visible. Click somewhere next to it and the pocket depth has been changed. Select and type 10 millimeters here. Click next to it and the pocket depth has been changed to 10 millimeters. And the parametricity of the 3D CAD system is a huge advantage because if during the creation of the 3D solid the need to change the selected dimension arises, we don't have to prepare the solid from scratch. We just have to change the selected dimension and the changes will be adjusted to the solid. And that's the end of this lesson. Save the progress of your work. In the previous lesson I showed you that we can edit the dimensions of the sketch and the dimensions of the parameters that we have already added to the model. And in this lesson I will show you such a complete sketch editing and we edit the sketch. Right click and select edit sketch. And in addition to being able to edit the dimensions of the sketch, we can also change this sketch completely and I'll create another geometry here. Select circle drawing and draw a circle anywhere with any diameter. Then choose the constraint diameter command to specify the diameter of this circle. Select the circle and enter 30 millimeters. Enter to confirm. Right click to cancel the circular dimension command. And now we will place this circle so that the center of the circle lies on this line and on this line. To do this, select the constraint point onto object. Select the center of the circle and select this line. Then select the center of the circle and select this line. And now the center of the circle lies on the center of the rectangle. Right click to cancel this command. And now the sketch is green, fully defined, but this sketch is wrong because sketches in FreeCAD cannot intersect. If now I click close, a warning appeared here and the changes were not applied to the sketch. And here the warning also appeared. Edit this sketch again and the sketch in FreeCAD must be a single, closed geometry and to remove unnecessary edges from this geometry, select the trim command and select this edge, this edge, this edge and this edge. 
right-click to cancel this command. And here, during the deletion of the geometry pieces, we also lost some constraints. And to see which constraint was lost, we can click this button to highlight the degrees of freedom. And this has been highlighted. Somewhere here we don't have a constraint. However, in many cases it may not be very clear. So let's deselect all the geometries by left-clicking outside the geometries. And now I'm gently grabbing this point and moving this point to see where there is no constraints. And I see that this line is not vertical. That's why select that line. Select constraint vertically and OK. This line is already vertical. But the dimension of this line is not the same as the dimension of this line. That's why select these two lines and choose constrain equal. And now we are already back to the state where the whole sketch is fully defined. Click close to exit the sketch. And those changes that we added in the sketch have also been applied to the 3D solid. And such sketch editing is allowed, but only in situations where it is a recently used sketch. Recently added operation. Because now if we edit this sketch in a similar way, let's edit this sketch. And here add a circle, the center of which will be on this edge. Right click, add a dimension, 50 millimeters, and place this circle in the center of this line. Select these two points and the center of the circle and choose the symmetry constraint. Now trim the unnecessary edges. Here we can already see that we don't have a constraint, specifying that the line is horizontal, because these red symbols next to the geometries specify the constraints. And here, next to this line, we have a symbol. And next to this line, this symbol is not there. So select this line and choose Constrain Horizontally. And now grab gently with the left mouse button. And select this line and this line and select Constrain Equal. And now click close and pay attention to what happened. Those changes that we applied in this sketch were not added to the solid, plus there were errors in the next operation. Let's recalculate this solid. OK, even the recalculation does not work. And such a thing, such sketch editing in FreeCAD is not allowed. I will undo this sketch editing operation. OK, once again. Here you have to undo several times. Here I undo too far, repeat, refresh and OK. Now everything is back to normal. And as we have a sketch that is in the last added operation then such a sketch we can edit. But we cannot edit sketches that were used before. And this problem is related to FreeCAD's build. And it is generally known and it is possible that this will be fixed in the near future. But for now you have to remember not to change sketches created earlier. We can change the dimensions of such a sketch, but we can't make such changes that will change the geometry, because such a change can completely damage the design. And that is where we will end. Keep these things in mind. Save the progress of your work. Another basic issue of creating 3D models in 3D CAD systems is the issue of adding roundings and chamfers to the edges of the solid. To do this, select the edges to which you want to add chamfers or roundings, and in this view, you have to do it with the Kotal key. Select four edges of the solid, and here we will add chamfers, and to add a chamfer, select the chamfer operation, and here specify the dimension of the chamfer. Enter, for example, 5 mm and click OK. In a similar way, we will add rounds, and to make it easier to point the edges, switch to wireframe view. And now with the Kotal key, select the pocket edges. And select fillet. And specify the radius size. Type 5 mm and click OK. Now we can return to the as is view. And when it comes to adding chamfers and rounding, we can add chamfers and rounding to all edges that are on the selected face. Select this face and choose the add chamfer command. And here enter 1 mm as the chamfer size. And the chamfers have been added to all the edges that are on this face. Adding chamfers as well as rounding are very simple operations, but they are often very useful. And now I will show you how to change the color of the solid. And this can be done in two ways. You can give a random color, and to do that right click on the whole body or on the last operation and choose random color. 
and now the color of the solid has been changed. A random color has been selected here and we can click like this until we find a suitable color. Or we can just right click on the body or on the last operation and here select appearance and we can specify shape color. And from the color palette we can choose the color we want. In a similar way, we can specify the color of the lines and the color of the points. And also we can specify the transparency of this solid. Click close. Now this solid looks like this and that's all for today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to this channel.